Hi everybody and welcome to a overview of the ProBlair version 2.8.1 F0 update. So we've got a couple new features, a bunch of bug fixes and some changes as well. We'll just go over real quick uh, the major items here in case you're curious or want to make sure you're up to date on that. Uh, and of course I want to mention that we have the great getting started tutorial right here. You can click right to go and learn in about five minutes all the basics of ProBuilder uh, as well as a link to the docs, the support forum if you have any questions, bugs, etc. and a contact us uh, email link. So jumping right into it, uh, most of these uh, new updates ha are linked to the new poly shape item and the first one is that uh, just an update to how it works with setting the pivot. Now the first point you click is going to be the pivot point. So if I go in here and start creating an object and then uh, build this up, once I then exit the editing we'll see that the pivot is right at that point where I first clicked. This makes it a bit easier to set up your objects um, instead of the, I think the pivot before was spawning at the world origin, which of course wasn't a real good setup. Um, much better, much better now for sure. And as usual, you can edit this uh, with ProBuilder if you wanted to say move the pivot over to this point here. I can then click on, you know, set pivot and boom, my pivot is there. Uh, or just directly pivot it or set it to the center of the object with the, uh, the object tools in ProBuilder. So a couple options you have as always. Uh, number two, uh, let's see, you can now, let me just undo that pivot change to make it a little better. Okay, so you can, um, or I should say the poly shape when you're creating it starts out at zero height. So if I'm creating, I'll just start adding a uh, another shape up here. Um, that's good, I suppose, doesn't really matter. Uh, if I hit spacebar to end the shape or click back on the original point, either way, now you see that the shape starts at a height of zero, so it's not instantly popping up or down to any heights that can be confusing sometimes. It worked half the time, didn't work the other half, of course, negative or positive. Now it starts at zero, and as you start moving your mouse, it keeps up with you. So a little more intuitive, makes more sense, um, and just, uh, just feels like a, a better way of setting the height for your objects. Um, still, of course, you can just grab that little green uh, handle there, move it up and down, or again, as always, change the extrusion value directly uh, in the inspector. So this leads us to the final poly shape change or addition, however you um, might think of it. Uh, so there's a couple ways this works with ProGrids. Um, when you are creating and you uh, start creating something on, let's first look at a, uh, a case that won't work for this. Uh, let's say I'm creating on I'm going to set my grid a little bit smaller, half a meter. I'm creating on this surface over here. Uh, obviously, as I'm creating it, it can't be actually on the grid. Uh, the, the grid isn't going to work unless we had um, sort of a 45 degree angle grid or something like that. It's going to create its own local grid. So it's you can see it is snapping to a grid, but of course it's not the actual world grid. So I've created that. I can move it around. It's going to be off the grid. Uh, however, something new is if you create it in a position that can use the world grid for example if I start building an item uh, or a poly shape on top of this surface or maybe this surface here or even this over on the right all of these surfaces are aligned to the uh, to the world um, so when I start creating I'll zoom in here a bit if I click let's say right about here you'll see that it snaps that first point actually to right here which is on the world grid and now as I go about creating my shape, it's snapping all these points again to the world grid, nice and easy. And if I were to move the object around, again, it's snapping to that world grid. Might make a bit more sense if I move the visual grid up a bit so you can see it there. Snapping to the grid. So again, this is only relevant to pro grids. Um, and this is just going to kind of add a bit more on um, before we get into a uh, major update for ProGrids that uh, should be including things like uh, custom local grids and all sorts of fun things like that. Okay, so that's it for PolyShape. A lot of nice, um, or um, a few couple little additions to make it easier and, and uh, more intuitive. Um, then we have a couple um, more important bug fixes, I'll call them. Uh, number one, the uh, material editor window. You can now resize the width. Uh, sorry about that. It got uh, stuck at some point to a rather narrow width, which was uh, getting in the way if you had uh, longer names or anything here for your material palette. Uh, and then, uh, much more um, maybe uh, annoying than that, also in the probably their preferences area, this now works correctly. So, sorry everybody if you dealt with that and we missed it for a couple updates. Um, 
Oops, I'm trying to change the preferences window, but of course you can't change that. It's just a Unity thing. But the important thing is the GUI now works. Um, also just want to make a shout out to this preferences area. There are so many preferences in here. Um, nobody really uh, seems to look at these. We get a lot of questions that go right back to this. Uh, lots of cool things you can do in here, like changing the handle size, colors of items, uh, yada, yada, yada. So many cool things you can do in here, as well as setting all the shortcut keys, or, or a lot of them. Um, you can really customize Pro Bella to work um, to work just right for you. So that GUI is now fixed up. Hooray! Uh, and that's it for the major additions here. Um, of course, there's uh, quite a few bug fixes added in as well. You might want to check through that in case you were having some issues. Um, they might be fixed up for you. And if you're still having an, any issues, we'd love to see um, your posts on the support forum. Uh, emails are great. If it's something quick and simple, of course, we're always happy to answer and chat. And there's even a, uh, a live chat option on the site, which we um, try to answer as, free as frequently as possible. Um, but that support form, uh, we love when you can post there. It helps the whole community, of course. Uh, and it allows us to track and fix things a lot, uh, a lot more easily. So I'm rambling. None of this really matters. I uh, just wanted to get this update out to you guys. Uh, it should be available on the Unity Asset Store or via the uh, user toolbox on our website. So thanks very much for taking a look, and let us know if you have any questions. See you in the future updates.